I don't think it's an accurate to think of large language model as chatbots or some kind of word generators. It's a lot more correct to think about them as a kernel process of an emerging operating system. Wait, but what the heck does that mean? Well, large language models will gradually become the interface between you and the computer systems. Right now, you're holding a device that has some computing power inside it, but you can't directly access that power. Your interaction is mediated by an operating system such as Windows, Mac OS, Android or iOS, which transforms a collection of chips and circuits into a user-friendly interface. Your operating system allows you to perform a wide range of activities like reading some article through a variety of apps running on top of it. Each app has its own user interface and its own set of tasks it can accomplish. You jump from one app to another, one UI to another depending on what you need to do. Tomorrow, you'll have a single UI to do everything from writing an annual business report to building a new app from scratch. The said UI will be a chat box or a context window inside which you can submit instructions in natural language and that's where prompt engineering comes into play. Prompt engineering is a fancy way to say write better and better instructions for your AI model until it does exactly what you want. Except it's not merely wordplay, it's a blueprint for the future of programming. Programming refers to a technological process for telling a computer which task to perform in order to solve problems. You can think of programming as a collaboration between humans and computers in which humans create instructions for a computer to follow code in a language computers can understand. In other words, programming turns computing power into commodity, a resource you can use to accomplish your goals. Prompt engineering is a tool that turns programming itself into a commodity. You can submit an instructions to an LLM and it writes the code for you. Let's say you want to analyze a tiny data set for a work project. Normally, you'd start by gathering hundreds of CSV files scattered around across your company's cloud. You then double click on the Jupyter Notebook and then type in a few lines of Python code to compile your inputs into a single data frame. From there, you sprinkle from data science magic, run a dozen of iterations and congratulations, you got yourself a collection of elegant tables, fancy graphs and data-driven predictions. Your last step is to compress your six weeks of works into 42 beautiful slides displayed on yet another app called Microsoft PowerPoint. You just combined off the shelf app with the code you wrote yourself to build a program that runs a specific data analysis. But what if instead all you had to do was to write a few instructions in plain English? Let's say you're giving an instructions to an AI just like this. Here's a messy data set about the deliveries a company made across Paris in the last five years. Please clean up the mess and run a clustering algorithm. Display a heat map and zoom on high density spots. Throw in a two year projections and use the result to optimize the daily itinerary of a delivery fleet. When you're done with the math, generate a report with clear graph and suck in comments and take your time, I'll be gone for at least six hours. Just like how Tony did in Ironman. Every time you write such a prompt, you are effectively programming an app that solves a specific problem. You collaborate with a computer to achieve a goal. The only difference is instead of code, you'll use plain English. Okay, the prompt may be few yards shy of the finish line, but in principle, that's what your interaction with the future LLMs will look like. It'll be a while before we can replace data scientists, web developers and software engineers with a bunch of clever prompts. In the meantime, we'll augment them with the AI assistants that make their work more efficient. And each one of these AI assistants will be programmed in plain English. Instead of using a bundle of complementary apps like Google Workspace, Jupyter Notebook and Microsoft PowerPoint, you'll put together an assistant called Stat Sniffer or something like that, which will be your personal data science expert. Much like current chat CVD Plus, your personalized Snap Sniffer will be the LLM hooked to a series of tools that give up the extra capabilities like browsing files, running codes and generating graphs. You can also infuse Snap Sniffer with top performing methodologies by giving it access to research papers, case studies and academic textbooks. OpenAI is already experimenting with personalized AI assistants through GPT Store where you can build assistants called GPTs. The current GPTs are clunky, however, for instance, they are vulnerable to simple jailbreaks that make them reveal their core instructions. GPTs also tend to revert their default mode, GPT-4, after a few exchanges with the users. This is not a surprise because the tech is still in its infancy. As AI research advances and open source models get better, the ecosystem of AI assistance will be evolved to cover more capabilities with increased reliability. Speaking of which, there is a long way to go. Problems like planning and multi-step reasoning remains unsolved in part because LLMs are still lagging behind humans and even cats when it comes to understanding physical reality. The bigger the frontier of AI gets, meaning that the task AI models can perform with high accuracy, the more problems we'll be able to solve using prompts. This brings us to a widespread fallacy that suggests more capable AI models require less prompt engineering skills. The real question is, is prompt engineering dead? Actually, no. It's an state of art. 
One way to see this relationship between large language models and the prompt generating is to picture the former as a multiverse and the latter as a pointer. Yes, like a laser pointer. When you ask an NLM a question, it considers a multiverse of relevant documents. Inside each document, there is a cluster of possible answers, and each possible answer is a chain of probabilities. Your prompt points towards a universe that's most likely to contain the desired answers, and from there, your model tries to navigate its way to that desired answer, one word at a time. Each time the model predicts a token, it eliminates hundreds of alternative paths and continues to narrow down its operation until all that's left is a series of words that constitute the destination. This destination is never the same. However, even if you use the exact same prompt, you almost never reach the exact same address. Instead, you land somewhere in the neighborhood of the most relevant answer. If an LLM is like a database of millions of effective programs, then a prompt is like a search query in the database. This program database is continuous and interpolative. It's not a discrete set of programs. This means that slightly different prompt, like lyrically rephrase this text in a style of X, would still have pointed to a very similar location in a program space, resulting in a program that would behave pretty close but not quite identical. Prompt engineering is a process of searching through program space to find the program that empirically seems to perform best on your target task. As I said, your prompt's goal is to call the right program for the task you want to accomplish. The reasoning trap many people fall for is to believe future LLMs should be able to predict which program we want them to run, even when we give them vague assignments. Except, as with humans, even if you hire most technically capable engineer, she won't be able to read your mind. You have to explain exactly what you want, otherwise you are wasting time and energy. Let's say you instructed your formidable engineer to build a product, but you didn't like the result. You can either change the engineer or change your instruction. Since you know your engineer is highly skilled, common sense suggests that you opt for the second option. Similarly, if your highly capable language model doesn't produce the answer you want, you don't throw it away. You don't sit around hoping the next model will be able to read your mind. The most reasonable and cost-effective approach is to improve your prop. Manipulating LLM is playing with an alien tool. The only way to figure out what it can do is to press its buttons in the different ways. When a new version of this alien tool comes out, you would expect it to have more capabilities but also more buttons. The naive approach is to think more capable models requires less prompting. In reality, the more capable your model, the more features you can unlock using the right prompts. So it's time to shine. Don't sit around in the corner worrying about losing your job if AI takes over. Even if it outsmarts you, don't let that hold you back. LLMs are special pieces of this hypothetical Lego because you'll often end up with one at the center of your creations. This brings us to two complementary flavors of prompt engineering. See, prompt engineering has two meanings, right? High quality natural language instructions for LLMs and write code on top of LLMs to improve their output using conditional prompting and other techniques. The second definition includes the first because even if you wrap code around the LLM, you still use English to interact with it. Here's how both of these definitions intertwine with LLM usage. LLMs as standalone programs. Here you write high quality prompts in natural language to unlock the best possible outputs. Example involved idea generation, document summary and writing code. LLMs as part of program you design. Here you write softwares in Python, Java, C++ or other programming languages wrapped around LLMs to achieve specific tasks. Examples involve sentiment analysis of social media comments, specialized chatbots and autonomous agents. Now let's explore what prompt engineering looks like for each use case. The most common use case for LLM is to interact with them through web interfaces like chat GPTs and bots. Based on your specific needs, you can build a personal library of prompts. You want your prompts to be templated and easy to update. This way, you don't have to rewrite your prompts from scratch or search for them in the chat history every time you want to run one of them. Alright, here's a sample for document summary. Let's say, act like a research assistant in the field of space, I'll give you a reported title named Black Hole as input. Please access the report through the following link using the online browsing feature. Summarize the report in less than 1500 characters and add 7 quotes from the authors. Make sure to pick precise quotes and list them as a bullet points. So there is a lot of examples available in my blog. If you want to check them out, feel free to go ahead and take a look at that. All right, let's move on to the next case. In this case, you never use your LLMs as a functions. You can call to process, analyze, and generate natural language. For example, your code can call an LLM to analyze sentiment in a series of comments related to a given product. After processing these comments, you can use another LLM reliant function to generate a response based on the previous result. Now, let's look at how you can embed LLMs in your code. There's three primary ways. Connect through an API provided by another company. Use a local server within your company's network. Install an open source LLM directly on your computer. 
and here's a basic way to do that and as always you can find this code in my blog so go ahead and take a look at that all right so how to improve your prompt engineering skills the short answer is you must do two things read and write a lot much like writing prompt engineering appears easy until you sit down and hit the keyboard since we use natural language to write prompts we approach it with a false sense of simplicity if you want high quality responses you have to learn to express your intentions as clearly as possible keep up with your literature to learn new techniques and put in as many repositories as you want to integrate them you may get bored of typing random instructions into a flickering context window the antidote is to find difficult problems to solve find problems hard to solve and prompt engineering skill will go from a skill you have to learn to a daily dose of blissful intellectual stimulation with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next video peace